Hi, I'm Mark Pilkington from Skywagons University. Today we're going to talk about the differences and similarities between a 206 and a 205. It's a rare opportunity to have them both together at the same place to be able to show the differences. A very overlooked plane, the 205. So let's get stuck in and have a look. So the 205s were built between 1963 and 1964, which isn't really between because it's like two years. So they were a fixed gear 210. You can still see on the chin of the 205, it's got the bump where the nose wheel would retract if this was a 210. But these are fixed gear, 63 and 64. And in 64, the 206 came out with a 520 in it and the different aileron and flap configuration. So everybody bought the 520 powered big boy and the 205 was taken out of production fairly quick. But these planes are basically super Skylanes. They're, they're 260 horsepower, fuel injected, IO 470 powered, six seat 182, super Skylane. But the 206 overshadowed it. So if you look at the airframe on that, there's door, window, window, and then they're back. And then you come over and look at the 206 equivalent you'll see a very similar configuration door window window so even though they stopped production of the 205 in 64 the 206 became its replacement so the comparisons are 205 is 260 horse fuel injected IO470 1500 hour TBO the 206 this is a turbo is a TSIO 520 turbocharged 520 engine with a 1600 hour TBO. If it was non turbo, it would be 1700 hour TBO. And if it was a pre 76 turbo 206, it would be a 1400 hour TBO. So different engines, different TBOs. This is a 1980, so this is a 24 volt wet wing, large square tip three blade prop, 310 horsepower, IO 520. Um, Continental with a 1600 hour TBO. Same fuselage and same seat configuration as a 205, same wingspan and square footage as a 205, but now we'll get into some of the differences. So the 206 has a 13 foot wide horizontal stabilizer. Look, I can barely, I can't reach both sides of it. So now we'll quickly go over to the 205 and compare with it. Over here on the 205, I can easily reach the width of the horizontal. So the 206 was way out here. And also the 206 has flat skins on top of the elevator and a square counterweight. This is a triangular counterweight, like on a 182. And if we go and look quickly at the 206's tail, this is the major difference between the types. Flat skins, giant square counterweight, and when it's flying and it's level, it's slightly below here, which means it's carrying its own weight. So even though it's a heavy elevator in the air, it's light. This wide tail went on 206s in 1968. So if you buy a 67 or 63, no, 64 to 67 206, it'll have that narrow tail on it. And those are the planes where people think they have to have weight in the back to counteract running out of elevator when you're landing nose high with a forward center of gravity. So sometimes you do need to carry a bit of weight in an early Skylane or a 205 if it isn't full. If it's got a full cabin, the yoke travel on final is normal, but sometimes you do have to add some weight. This wide tail being 13 feet wide, this is the 210's tail. This 13 foot wide tail um, gets rid of that problem and you never run out of elevator on it. So that's the main difference, the big wide flat skin tail. Wings. So. We'll show you later in this video a drone footage of it from above, which will give a really exact format and layout. You can see them both in their own, in one picture. But the detail would be, this is where the wing tapers on a, on a Cessna. Parallel sided, and then taper from here, right there. But this is where the flap ends. So there's this much room. There to there is extra flap on a 206. And look at the thickness of the aileron. It's a massively thick 18-inch Fry's aileron with a hinge in the middle. Very effective. So even though it's shorter, it's got way more authority in comparison to the 205. So the 205, here is the taper point of the wing, and that is where the flap and aileron split. And it's basically a 182. So same, aileron, same flap as a 182, same aileron as a 182. It's got the hinge on top. It's only about 10 inches thick. So it's slightly less efficient. So 
not only did they put the bigger engine in this plane, they changed the configuration of the wing and of the flaps and ailerons on the 206, which made it just altogether more desirable, which meant these were stopped production after only two years. Although with hindsight, if you need a 182 with more than four seats, you can't beat a 205. Plus, this plane is just under 100 grand, and that plane is just under 300 grand. So you're going marginally slower with a similar useful load, burning a tiny bit more gas, or a tiny bit less gas, in a plane that can do almost the same job. The vertical fin is the same on both. Same dorsal, same rudder, same everything on the back. Doors on these different two types of plane. 205s have two front doors like a 182, just normal two front doors and a single baggage door, but a big one. I mean, that is big enough for people to be able to go in it. You know, humans can actually get in there and sit in two normal seats in the back, the fifth and sixth. So that's a very useful feature of a 205 that a 182 doesn't have. <coughs> the P206, which is not pressurized, it stands for passenger. The P206 was made from 1964 to 1970, and they have two front doors, passenger, and one back door here. The perfect year of P206, if you don't need the U model, which I'll show you in a minute, is a 1968, 9, or 70. They have got no nose wheel gear door chin on the front that's useless. They were removed in 68 when the wide tail was put on. 69 and 70 the same. And also 68, 69 and 70 have the wide tail. So a P206 from 68, 68, 69 and 70 look like that with the wide tail but two front doors. So this is a U206. The U206 was available from the beginning to the end. I mean, it's still available today. They were built from 64 to 86. They shut them down for 10 years. And then they built them again from 97 till today. The U stands for utility. And here's why. That's utility. But no front door. This is just a panel with a window. So you can't get out there. The passenger gets in first and they're in there. So passenger, pilot in the front, everybody else in the back. And if you remove those two seats, you just have a four seater with a massive baggage area. But this huge utility door is incredibly popular in the 206. And so they stopped making the P's in 1970 and they made the U's right up to the present day. Same airframe. This is the 205. You can see where the flaps and ailerons separate where I'm standing. It's the same as a 182 on the wing on a 205. Back here on the tail, it's the 10 foot tail with a corrugated elevator and it's easy to reach across. It's about my arm's width. And in comparison, over here on the 206, the flap is about a foot and a half longer. It goes beyond the taper and the aileron is bigger. You can see it here as I'm moving it. And then back on the tail, this is the flat skinned wide 13 foot tail that I can barely reach across with a square counterweight. So just a little aerial view to show the differences. So this is Mark Pilkington from Skywagons University signing off on another video. Please subscribe on the button below and you'll be able to see a whole load of other videos similar to this. And feel free to comment in the comment box. Thanks very much.